The gospel reading for today, I'm told I can't shorten this, is from Matthew 25, 35 through 40. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed, welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the Lord said to them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. This is the word of the Lord. Now I have a couple of words from our mission trip. You might guess from the yellow shirt. First, I want to thank everyone here and the Thrifty Pen for making it possible. I'm not a great speaker. I'm not full of that wisdom she's talking about. And in fact, I don't like talking in front of people. That's very strange for a lawyer, I know, but that's who I am. God has a sense of humor. You notice when he called Moses to lead the people out of Egypt, Moses had killed somebody in the Pharaoh's family. He stuttered, couldn't speak in front of people, but God called him. Uh, so Aaron spoke for him. Uh, and Jonah tried to say, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go with the message. I'm sorry. The whale swallowed him and spit him back out on the beach, and he finally got the message that he had to get up and speak. Well, I had a plan, and speaking of God's sense of humor, I really want to thank you for sending us to the Dominican Republic the week you did because it was freezing here and snow. <laughs> and that was very nice of you. But as I said, God has a sense of humor. So when we got back, we had no heat in our house <laughs> for a couple of days. It made us appreciate the Dominican Republic. One of the things that we did in the Dominican Republic, besides working with the children, was work with each other. And I was asked to talk or give a lesson to the group. I politely declined, although I said I'd think about it. And my offer to decline was accepted when I confused a bate, which is the community we went to serve, with a bade. <laughs> the only thing those two things have in common or the language. It's probably French, not Spanish. The island of the Dominican Republic is, was settled by the French in Haiti and the Spanish in what is commonly the Dominican Republic now. And I'm a bit of a history buff, so I'm going to fill in a little of the history for you. Uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti grew sugarcane. They were basically the slaves that came over to the Dominican Republic and Haiti that grew the sugarcane or harvested the crops. Well, the slaves in the Dominican Republic revolted and threw out the French. And as a result of that, Napoleon sold us the Louisiana Purchase because he was afraid the slaves, he wouldn't be able to control them in the Louisiana Purchase. When we went to the Dominican Republic, I took a book. It was not the Bible. 
It was a book about how slavery created capitalism in the United States. This is a little strange for the subject where I'm talking about, but it'll tie together in a minute, I hope. It turns out that the slaves in America were the fresh first or the predecessor to the oil boom, cotton boom. The cotton boom in the South created American capitalism and was our chief export for probably the first 50 or 100 years of the country. And the slaves built that capitalism. And the only reason we prospered during that first 100 years and built an infrastructure was on the back of slavery. And the Bates, I'm still not sure I'm saying that right, are what are country towns or country um, company stores, company communities. If you were from Appalachia, as I was at one point, uh, coal mining companies would own the housing, the store, and everything, and the, the people in the town were indebted to the company. They had to buy their food there, their clothing there, they got their housing there. And these bates were essentially Haitians that came over to the Dominican Republic to work in the sugarcane fields. They were given housing, enough money for food, and they stayed and worked. But over a period of time, they were not permitted to return to Haiti. They had lost their citizenship, and they were not welcome in the Dominican Republic because they really were French-speaking, and they hadn't been born in the Dominican Republic. So they're isolated in these little bates uh, and not really free to go anywhere or work in the community or vote in the community and they're not citizens of the Dominican Republic. I hoped it would tie together like that. They're stuck. Um, but my plan to when I went down there was to do what I could while I was there to make some little difference to represent you to the people in terms of service and do help build a warehouse or help feed people. Along with this, they would give out the beans as Jackie talked about in a big bag. They would get a little bag of beans to go with this. So some of us would give out beans to go along with this in a bowl that the people would bring to carry these and the beans in. And on some occasions I would give out beans. On some occasions I would greet them at the door as they left and say, God bless you, God go with you. And sometimes they'd say, thank you, or gracias, or maybe they said it in French, I don't know. There were too many languages going on down there. But it's, it's God, I've been on other mission trips and I've been in other countries and other continents I've never seen this level of poverty. The um, people in the Pates need everything that we can give them, I think. They seemed happy. They didn't seem miserable or unhappy. I think we need to learn to be happy with what we have as opposed to sometimes we're not very happy. Uh, so pray for the people of the Dominican Republic and in Haiti and the third world uh, if if sometime you get a call to go remember Moses and Jonah he will find you you can go you don't have to be young, you can be old, you don't have to be skilled. I mean, the pickleball thing was put A and B and C and B and, you know, it was, didn't take a lot of engineering to figure that out. And counting out beans, you can do that, or carry cinder blocks, you can do that. Or say thank you to, uh, welcome to the people that are coming to get the food. We went out to some of the homes 
when we visited and some of your sheds in your backyard are bigger than their homes and some of your sheds are made a lot better than their homes. Some of their homes are made out of corrugated metal or cinder block with no windows, maybe a door with no door. And the bed is a frame. Now I can sleep on anything, you've already heard that. Uh, but I've never seen such poverty. Uh, so if you get a call to work at the Thrifty Penny or to serve meals or to be on one of the committees of the church, there used to be a book I read called God is the Hound of Heaven. He will find you. You can answer without a fight. And that's what he wants us to do. Thank you for letting me go. So as John was talking about, um, I started to put some of the photos on here. These are photos from the batets that were down there. Um, and it, in many cases, it, so um, a lot of these batets, actually you have a church in them. Um, fortunately, there are, there are the hands of Peter God are everywhere. Um, there are people of faith who are down there uh, trying to help local people of faith. Pastors who are not paid for their job. They are seriously bivocational. Uh, because they do not get paid anything for what, for what they do. Um, they have to earn their own, their own way, some other way, but they're still there trying to minister to people in the batets. And that fortunately, Lisa, these ministries is able to partner with uh, those part pa pastors. Uh, this is one of the churches that we went to. Um, and this was also another uh, one of the churches we went to. I, when me and uh, John and Gail were there that morning um, to handing out. The pastors know... Uh, the, the community and are able to be able to work with them uh, every week. I mean, not just we. Does, at least these ministries does this all the time, every every week, every day. Um, and uh, we were just there to be to help out uh, with that. But they, um, <coughs> I don't know, if <coughs> Gail and Destiny, do you want to add anything out to that? Do you want to? You can come up here if you want. We met people everywhere, people who were joyous, as John was talking about, who were, who were, who were joyous about it, just being alive and being there and joyous for uh, the help they were getting. That was something that Destiny met uh, when we were down there. Um, there's other, I mean, I have other photos in here. Of, 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 oh, here's a photo of John carrying, carrying a box of manna. You can't see it in the little dark, but he's, <coughs> he's carrying that box of manna right in there. Um, the least of these ministries primarily is uh, is there to hand out um, uh, to hand out food, and I, I started with um, showing this photo here of the group. And this is the group that went down. Um, <coughs> there's all of us that are from Epworth. The rest of the team is everybody that was we were with. We were there. Um, so the man on the left, Ricardo, you may recognize him if you were here the Sunday he was here giving the message. Um, he is the manager of least of the ministries down there. All the way to the right is our, our new friend, Marty, um, who is a director of the ministries. And surprise, surprise, he's here with his wife and granddaughter. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Um, this was the church we went, we attended for services. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, Lisa's Ministries was able to, um, through donations and volunteer work, was able to build their own warehouse um, a few years ago uh, in Barona with no debt. Um, so they were able to, to be able to start um, right away with being able to, to conduct their ministry. Um, this is the warehouse. 
Um, so this is actually part of the warehouse, and you can see those are boxes and boxes of manna full of all those bags that we showed up there. And this is what they give out every day, every week. Um, I will point out the racks here were paid for by the Thrifty Penny. Uh, so that is one of the, one of the reasons why uh, the Thrifty Penny is uh, such an important resource here at the church. Uh, to keep giving them business um, so that they can, they can pay, for, pay for stuff like this. Um, this is the other side of the warehouse, which was mostly empty. Um, at least those ministries, did not, even though they bring mission teams down, they do not have their own facilities to house those mission teams. They rented a, a house uh, some, uh, somewhat nearby uh, where, where we were staying. However, they want, to they want to house their own mission teams, and, so, and they have the space on this side of the warehouse to do it. So they, they wanted to start building living quarters, and that was one of the things we did when we were down there. Um, they had prof local professionals who did some of the work here, like for instance, digging trenches for the footers and for the columns. But we were there to supplement that. We were there to um, to help with uh, even things such as tying rebar. Me and Gail learning how to tie rebar from a local named Alonzo on the left there. Um, there was a lot of different things we were doing that week. Not just the serving everywhere, but um, help, trying to help as much as we can in the in the warehouse. Okay in order to, um, to get the, the project moving along. Um, and we got to the point where later in the week we actually started laying cinder block down uh, during that. Um, since, since, the, since the jackhammering was brought up, I was so kind of good on myself jackhammering. Yes, uh, I was uh, scouring the, the, uh, the concrete in order to, to make the cinder block more level. Uh, the floor itself was not very level, or not as level as it could be. So this was helping to make sure that the cinder block could get um, laid down with mortar uh, and make the entire wall level. Um, we got to the point at the end of the week where um, the, the entire wall was done uh, by the time we left. They have since kept working on it after we, after we have gone and eventually there will, there will be a point where this bottom floor is a dining room and kitchen. And then there will be a floor above that for living quarters, bedrooms and a lounge. And they even want to be able to get up on the roof to put a um, uh, picnic tables and whatnot up there, um, uh, because I mean it's warm year round, as John alluded to. Um, so it's a good a good way to be able to spread out a mission team, especially a large mission team, to be able to spread out through the area when they're not out uh, serving. So um, we were there to uh, to supplement everything that was going on. Like I said, they had professionals who were actually guiding the process. Um, <coughs> we did our best to try to work with them. We had translators uh, everywhere, but a lot of times it was a lot of pointing and, you know, you know muy biens and gracias and, you know, we tried as best to communicate. We did, everything worked out really great. Uh, it was such a, it was such a, a good trip. Um, <coughs> I don't know if, if you, you all want to add anything or Jack, you want to add anything or, or we can wrap it up. Um, one thing I did want to show is some of the views over here. Uh, this was actually the view from the house we were staying in, um, which it, it's, <coughs> the view from the warehouse is great, but one thing I think, one thing we'll miss once at least these actually able to move into their own warehouse is the view from this, from this house. This is looking out on the bay at the mountain over there on the left, um, and just uh, absolutely beautiful waters. Um, we were able to, to get into the water a little bit when we were down there. Um, and that's, I think that's an important thing is we're not just going in to, um, to do work. Uh, we're there to meet people. We're there, um, but also we do want to get out and see the, the, the land that they live in. These are people who, are, who love where they live still. I mean, it's as much poverty there is, they love their country um, as much as my, we might love our country. They're, they love where they live. Um, and this is a good uh, way to get out there and take a look at where they they're staying so um, one more this is actually the house we were staying in um, so that's it for me I think um, what do you think good thank you all um, okay. for indulging in this we, we we're really happy with what where the way our trip went we want to talk about it so thank you okay. good job Mike is a wonderful way of condensing and putting things together so you could see the um, whole picture of where we are. 
Let's stand and sing the hymn of response. It's hymn number three, uh, 344. There is Spanish there, if you could sing in Spanish. We're going to sing the English version, but again, the world, the words speak to us. <laughs> 